Good evening, guys. Uh, my name is Dinesh, and I'm working as an AWS consultant at Datacom. My previous experience and work background is from systems engineering slash networking and slash infrastructure. And since I started using AWS, I naturally grew into the space of um, infrastructure as code. Uh, today's topic is how to deploy a cross-account code pipeline to deploy network infrastructure mm -hmm. using Pulumi. Uh, before I start, I uh, just want to let you guys know, today is my 100th appearance at a public talking event as a speaker. <laughs> just kidding, today is my first time, so please bear with me, right? <laughs> right, so today's topic, uh, cross-account code pipeline to deploy network infrastructure. Uh, may I know how many of you have an idea about Terraform or infrastructure as code? Holy shit, it's a lot of cool. And Pulumi people here? Pulumi, Pulumi, Pulumi. Nice, nice. Right, so what is Pulumi? Pulumi is a modern infrastructure as a code platform which lets you use your familiar programming language to deploy, manage, and build your cloud infrastructure. Why Pulumi? Well, first of all, you can use your friendly programming language. You can use Python, TypeScript, JavaScript, C Sharp to write the code. And that's why it's easy to use. Any developer with a beginner or intermediate experience can look at the code and understand what exactly is happening. Cloud agnostic, although I wouldn't recommend, but it can be used for other cloud providers as well. Multiple ways to store state files. So inside Pulumi, you can store the state file either locally. If you're using Pulumi Cloud, you can, use it, you can store it in the Pulumi Cloud as well. And if you're using AWS, you can, use, you can store the state files inside S3 bucket. Easy to restore in case of mishap. Uh, how many of us have an issue where we, we deployed something and the stack crashed? Happens, right? And those people who are not raising their hand, they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> so, so similar thing happened to us in a recent project where one of the stack was corrupted and we had no idea what exactly was happening. So we figured out the way to restore, and the restore method was to go into the S3 bucket, go to the backup files, restore, uh, 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 replace the current state file to the, the last good known backup file, do a, pro, uh, do a command called Pulumi refresh, and off you go. The stack was restored, and it was one of the happiest moments of my life. <laughs> but Pulumi is built on top of Terraform. All you Terraform fanboys, listen. Pulumi is built on top of Terraform, which means Terra, uh, Pulumi can do what Terraform cannot. And simply, Pulumi is better than Terraform. It's coming from a person who loves Terraform. So what happens is, like, when you're using Terraform, and especially if you're working in a really big environment where you have multiple accounts, VPCs, and a lot of resources are being created, sometimes you just wonder that, that would it be easier if we could use something like if loop and for loop? And the people who use Terraform, they know how big of a problem it can be if you're using Terraform. But with Pulumi, it's a piece of cake. You can use if loops, for loops, you can manipulate the code accordingly, and it makes it so, so much easier. Right. So prerequisite for the stack, we need a few database accounts. Like, we'll need a root account, which will host uh, the AWS organization. A shared services account, mainly the account which is responsible for the pipeline. <laughs> shared networking account. Shared networking account is a central account which hosts um, uh, important networking components like uh, transit gateway, NAT gateway, and it also can host VPN as well. We also need uh, two member accounts which we'll be using to deploy the VPCs into these accounts. We'll need an S3 bucket to store the state files and IAM roles, which will be used by the code build to assume it and action it in the child accounts. And beginner or intermediate experience in, in Python and AWS. So, what does the stack provide? The stack provides a cross-account pipeline to deploy network infrastructure across the entire AWS organization. What it means, you can have X number of AWS accounts. All you have to do, list your account, um, list your account numbers, and, and, and specify the VPC ranges and subnet ranges and let the pipeline handle the rest. Central management of the network. This is really important because 
if you're dealing with an environment which has got like tens of 20 CPCs, it becomes really hectic to do a change and then monitor the change six months down the line and you're asking other people like who did that, who did that. But if you're controlling everything by pipeline, all you have to do, commit the code, push it and let the pipeline handle it. Central net. This is really important. Uh, as you, most of, most of you know, as far as NAT gateway is concerned, NAT gateway is used to create the internet connectivity for the private subnets. However, I've seen few workplaces where they are deploying the NAT gateways uh, uh, per VPC. So, uh, well, according to Well Architecture Framework, the, VPC, uh, the NAT gateway has to be deployed in each availability zone. So, we have three availability zones in Sydney, and, and I've seen people deploying it in each VPC. So, that means if you have, let's say, 10 VPC, so you'll end up with 30 NAT gateways. And NAT gateways are really expensive. So one NAT gateway on an average costs around like $35, and that's in US dollars. And, and if you have 10 VPCs, it, it, it easily costs you around like $1,100 per month, USD. The solution is to deploy it centrally inside the central networking account and let the transit gateway handle the egress traffic out of the central network account. And it also deploys the transit gateway and transit gateway attachment across uh, the AWS organization. And because we're using resource access manager to share it across the AWS organization, you don't have to go inside each account and accept the invitation. Right. So this is how the pipeline will work. User commits the code, triggers the pipeline, triggers the stage one, Stage two, stage two deploys the network infrastructure inside the shading, shade networking account. And to do that, it assumes the role, goes inside the shade networking account, deploys VPC, deploys central net gateway, deploys uh, transit gateway, resource access manager, and extracts the transit gateway ID in a parameter store. And I'll tell you in a sec why we need to do that. So it kicks the third stage, which is to deploy infrastructure inside the member accounts. And first thing, it goes inside the shared networking account and extracts the transit gateway ID. Because when you're trying to create the transit gateway attachment, you need to have the transit gateway ID. And it extracts the transit gateway ID and stores it in the runtime. So next time, it assumes a role inside child account. It only has the transit gateway ID, and it creates the VPC and the transit gateway attachment. And entire stack is stored inside a S3 bucket as a state file. Demo time. Right, it has never happened, but my demo machine already crashed like twice. So let's keep the finger crossed. So as part of demo, I won't do anything exotic. I'll just update a tag and let the pipeline handle the execution. So. <laughs> I'll just uh
Are you able to make that a little bigger so you can? I wish I can. I'm just trying to remember what the shortcut is, and that's in the studio, right? Control pulse. Can you remember the shortcut? Control pulse. I don't know if it's control pulse or not. Yeah, I know it's possible. It must be possible. Lower the resolution of your laptop. <coughs> First, this is the first bit of the uh, triggering the whole thing to go. Or? Yeah. So you're doing that. So I'm just going to push. Oh, yeah. Any changes needs to be done inside the shared networking account. Are you able to make that a bit bigger for my tired old oh. eyes? <laughs> Sorry. This I'm Chrome, just, so it should be able to. Yeah. Now, I think just need a bigger screen. No, no, no. Control plus. I just. on a couple of minutes to complete the execution. Right, this last year has been unkind to my eyes. Trying to build up, uh, uh, trying to deploy, and, and, and uh, this is happening in the runtime of the of the code build image, and it's basically trying to deploy up up with Alumi stack .sh, which basically tells if we are deploying, creating, or destroying the Alumi stack. And there you go. It says thirty-six unchanged. So it's also a good thing that it, it can be used for a bigger uh, uh, network infrastructure way. If you've committed inside one thing, it would own, it would make sure that it's, it's changing inside that particular BBC and, and it's not touching anything else. So as you can see, you haven't changed anything inside shared networking. It says uh, that it's unchanged. It basically means it's not touching anything inside that account. So that's recognizing infrastructure that's already up and exactly. running without... Exactly. Right. And now it has triggered inside the cloud accounts. says that it needs to update and then it checks the committed code and then it, and it compares it against the state file which is shared in the S3 bucket. And then it says, oh, there is a chain and I need to destroy that chain. So it says line 198, um, apologies if you can't see, but it says line 198, there's a difference in the text. Sorry, can you control plus to zip that up? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Control plus. Control plus. Oh. plus. Here we go. A couple of times we'll do it. There you go. 
<laughs> oh yeah, that's perfect. Better? Oh yeah. <laughs> Too much time right. on those so, stupid little phone screens. Uh, it says one update, one update to do, and 99 change, and then it goes in and updates the tag. Let's go back to the. Okay. Might be hassle when you do the same in Visual Studio. So here's the VPC, and right. So as you can see, the tag has been updated. Project uh, AWS speed up. And one more thing which I would like to show. Right, so as I've told you that there is no NAT gateway inside this account. This server is running inside a private subnet and there's no NAT gateway. But it can still ping the internet via sending the packet from the dev3 account to the transit gateway account. And transit gateway account looks at the route table and it finds out that this needs to go to the internet, and then, then it forwards it to the NAT gateway, which is a central NAT gateway. And instead of 10, 20, 30 NAT gateways, we can do the job in three NAT gateways. And that's about it. Thank you, guys. Got time for questions? Yes. <laughs> of course. They, <laughs> Sorry. They have central NAT gateway. Yeah. But, uh, that's just... Uh, central to your infrastructure, or is that like everyone is using that? Right, so it depends upon the use case. So the, in this case, the use case is that we have deployed central NAT gateway inside a central networking account, which is part of the AWS organization or, 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 or company's organization. Mm -hmm. So you, you, cre you create the NAT gateway inside a central account rather than have it inside individual account. You can have it inside individual account, but it costs money, and it's definite, It's basically not doing any additional benefit rather than just like sitting in that account. But it's within your company structure, so exactly. you don't have it's, it's, it's within the AWS organization, which is being invoiced from one person or from one organization. Right, so you don't have like, you can't potentially get crossovers where someone could actually uh, insert a rule that could There's override something else has got. Well, I mean, that's why you have like different security third-party tools, right? So there's nothing foolproof. Yeah. The only thing which you have to do is basically uh, keep yourself updated and, 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 and have your environment as waterfall as possible and never be overconfident. Like, there's always this old smart person who can hack into your, your account. But as far as NAT Gateway is concerned, yes, uh, NAT Gateway is specifically meant to share uh, in, inside the AWS organization, which is, which is owned by a single entity or single invoice. One of the things I like about our Terraform pipeline is that I can plan what I'm going to do in the yes. different environments and then it choose to apply or yes. choose to go back and tweak it so I don't actually yes. destroy something. Exactly, yes. So you can do exactly the same with a command called Pulumi Preview. And then you can go a step further by saying Pulumi Preview diff. It tells you and shows you the difference which you have and which you're going to do if you commit the, the update, well, commit with the update. But can you put that in a pipeline step so that you have a manual? 100%, 100%, mm. you can. And then you can have the checks that if this, this is happening, then do this or otherwise abort the mission. Uh, question on the topic. So when you have Terraform, you can do a plan, tell you what it will do, yeah. and you can have a step that it will validate yeah. even before that. Yeah. Um, does it build anything on top of it? Because it ended, it happened to me a lot of times. That yeah. The plan was successful, validator was successful, but the apply didn't work because there was a certain thing that Terraform doesn't know or doesn't know. Those are the sad days, right? That, that, that it happened to me as well. I mean, sadly, there is no foolproof. I mean, for example, uh, it happened to me as well. So for example, according to Terraform logic or Palumi logic, it, it looks fine, but when it deploys, 
then it may have issues because it may look like that it's perfectly fine, but it may have some interdependencies which only comes into the picture once that stack is engaged or once this resource is engaged. Yeah, sadly, it's basically part of the nature of the beast. We really add something dynamic and add something at the uh, deploy point. You can, you can have policy checks. You can have a, a predefined policy check, which basically checks for the naming convention and checks for the other stuff related to the stack. So you can run that before you're running the Pulumi stack. So that's basically another layer of like, you know, just going through and, and making sure that it is linting properly and everything else. That's a very good question. So, uh, as part of the stack, I created two code build projects. One specifically for the shared networking. Uh, uh, I had like two code build projects. One is for shared networking because it has separate uh, uh, entities being created, and there was another one which is for the member accounts. And the reason I have two because if you uh, had a look that when we were running the the, the, the member account it also had an additional step to go back into the shared networking account and extract the transit gateway ID. So, so I created two different code build projects with two different uh, build spec files, specifically meant for, one is meant for the shared networking, another one was for member account, and member account can be X number of accounts. You're not supposed to ask questions, man. Nice. If you are okay, we've asked it. Yeah. Uh, you know I'm all about data. Of course. So, uh, why uh, why should I use Pulumi instead of CDK? CDK. Awesome question. Mm. Because I've, I've I've thoroughly used both of them, and uh, uh, I really love CDK as well. And uh, I would prefer CDK any day over Cloud Formation or Terraform. Uh, but as far as if I compare the AWS CDK with Pulumi CDK. It's way more simpler. It's, it's really easy to set up the stack, really easy to update, and uh, you can store the state file at different places. There's, there are different things which come, uh, come up with it. For example, because it's built on top of Terraform, there's so many other things which Terraform is good at, which AWS, AWS CDK is not. So you know, like, like it's, it's combining both the worlds of like AWS, plus it's also harnessing the uh, power of CDK, which is also built on top of Terraform. Question. Sure. Um, what languages can you use with Pulumi? So you can use Python, uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, C sharp. Okay. Basically, it covers most of the. Uh, does it support Go? It does support Go. Because you, yeah. you had it in this. Does support Go? Yeah. All right. Are there no more questions. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it.